भगवत गीता चैप्टर टू वर्स ट्वेंटी सेवन Alfred Nobel was reading the paper when he read his own obituary. The paper announced that Alfred Nobel, the inventor of the dynamite, has died. They said this person was the creator of the dynamite, and in a way, he is responsible for all these deaths that are taking place out here. And Alfred Nobel was horrified. No, this will not do. I must do something that people remember me in good light. How do you wish to be remembered after death? What do you wish to achieve at that stage? Bhagavad Gita sloka chanting is followed by translation and commentary by Swami Mukundananda. Watch Swami ji narrate three intriguing stories that will change your perspective on life. ध्रुव मृत्यु ध्रुव जन्म मृत तस्मादरीहारे नम शोचि डेथ इज सर्टन फॉर वन हु हैज बीन बॉर्न एंड रीबर्थ is inevitable for one who has died therefore you should not lament over the inevitable so he says that arjun those who are born they are bound to die one the only thing you can never avoid in life is death there was once a person he was sleeping and he saw a dream in his dream he saw a black shadow come behind him the black shadow placed its hand on his shoulder seeing the hand of the shadow on his shoulder he was terrified he turned around and saw the black shadow present there the shadow started speaking to him the shadow said I am your death. Your death has been finalized at the proper place and the proper time. I will meet you at that destined time in the destined place. And saying that the shadow vanished. Now this person woke up from his sleep. and he was terribly scared what kind of a dream was that i saw this dream of a shadow talking about my death he went and spoke to the learned people that can you interpret dreams and he spoke to them about this dream he said it was not just the mind running around that's a casual dream but the intensity of this made it feel different from other dreams what does it mean all these learned people told him that this dream is highly inauspicious this seems to be like a portent of your death to be Now the shadow said that death will meet you at the destined time. You do one thing, you run away from it. Get hold of the best horse in the city and just take off. He did exactly that. He purchased the horse putting all his money at stake. and he took off with the horse the 
horse was strong and riding fast. He was frantic, goading it along. By 10 in the morning, the horse had taken him miles and miles away from that site. By noon time, there was a long distance. Now he was quite relieved. But he was not willing to take chances. He kept goading the horse on. By 4 o'clock in the evening, he felt that his security level probability had increased statistically to 99.99%. He said, now I am safe. There is such a huge distance. The shadow can no longer get to me. So he said, the horse is also tired. Let it rest a bit. I will also take some rest. He got off from the horse and went and sat down under a tree, heaving a sigh of relief. Ah, his legs were aching, his body was aching from all that galloping. Moment he had felt a little relaxed, he found the sun fading away and a shade falling over him. Again, there was the distinct mark of the shadow. Its hand had fallen on his shoulder at the same place. He was shocked out of his wits. He turned around, exactly the same appearance. He said, you here? The shadow said, I told you yesterday. I am your death. I will meet you at the destined place, at the destined time. This is the place where I was supposed to meet you. I was worried, how would you come all the way here? But you had a good horse. It rode you very rapidly and you managed to make the distance in the proper time. And it killed the person. So they have all these strange and amazing stories, you know, when the Taj Hotel in Mumbai, it came under the attack of the terrorists. There were so many people who cancelled their programs for no reason and so many people who landed there by accident. So many strange things. So this death, when it is destined, it's going to take place. It's unavoidable, Sri Krishna says, Arjun. Everybody who is born is going to die. You also, Arjuna, are going to die. Now the question is, how does one die? Like Kabir says, that when we were born, we were the ones who were crying and everybody else was laughing. Now do such good acts so that when you die, everybody is crying and you are the one who is laughing. You see, what people feel about you, they often don't say when you are alive. It comes out when you are dead, then they realize the value of that person. Particularly for saints. You know, the saints, when they are in the world, they are always opposed, people are criticizing, finding faults. That is the way, if you read the history of saints, it happened with Kabir Das, Sur Das, Mirabai, Mahatma Gandhi, all the saints, Jesus Christ, Muhammad. But then when they leave the world, then everybody does the Jaikar. There was this once living in Brindavan called Gwariya Baba. So, he wanted to see what do people say after my death. So he printed some obituary papers and distributed them in Vrindavan that such and such Gwariya Baba, that saint, he has passed away. And there will be a Shok Sabha and a morning assembly at this 12 noon on this day in this place. 
So the various sadhus living in Vrindavan, they landed up there at that time. Now when they all gathered, they started thinking, now what to do? So amongst themselves, they selected a chairman of the Sabha and the vice chairman and secretary and they all started speaking. They started saying what a good person he was and what a nice person he was. Now when they used, the same people used to criticize him. So, so all of a sudden, he got up from the middle of the assembly and he started speaking. They said, who are you? He said, I'm Gwariya Baba. He said, but Gwariya Baba has died. You must be his ghost. He said, I'm not a ghost. I'm the original Gwariya Baba. Then how did he die? He said, he did not die. I just wanted to see what compliments you give me. That's why I arranged for this. And Alfred Nobel had the complete reverse experience. Alfred Nobel was living in Stockholm. He was reading the paper when he read his own obituary. The paper announced that Alfred Nobel, the inventor of the dynamite, has died. Actually, Alfred Nobel's brother had died. But the paper got it wrong, they thought he has died. So they said this person was the creator of the dynamite and in a way he is responsible for all these deaths that are taking place out here. Alfred Nobel was horrified that I will be remembered in history as the inventor of the dynamite. No, this will not do. I must do something that people remember me in good light. So he put all his fortune into that Nobel Peace Prize. That henceforth, whoever is responsible for in getting the maximum peace upon earth, we will give him this Nobel Peace Prize. So today he is remembered not because of inventing the dynamite, but because of being the institutor of the Nobel Peace Prize. So why did that happen? Because he got a preview into his death. He got a preview that if I were to die, what would happen? That happens to many people. They have near-death experiences. You may have heard of them, near-death experiences. They almost die for one or two minutes, then they come back to life. There's a book called Life After Life by Raymond Moody Jr. I remember reading it as a schoolboy. So, I was in Los Angeles and this very senior Indian engineer, I saw the book in his house. I said, after so many years, he said, Swamiji, have you read this book? I said, yeah, I still remember reading it. He said, it happened to me. Now, I would not believe that an engineer like him would tell lies. I said, what happened? You see, the book talks about this. So, he had exactly the same experience. He said, I died. And then I was taken by these messengers to a place and there was this amazing light there and they were going through. I was being able to see my karmas as if on a screen and they were totally non-judgmental, highly loving. And then all of a sudden they said, we are sorry, we've made a mistake. He said, what do you mean made a mistake? Uh, sorry, we've made a mistake. Hey, come on, this is not possible. He said, well, this is the way it is. We are sending you back. And he says, I, Swamiji, I came back to life. And that person is still living. But what purpose did that serve? It changed his perspective to life totally. That, my God, this life can go away at any time. And I'll have to give an account for my karmas. How will I face Yamaraj and God at that time? I cannot say, Yamaraj ji, very, very sorry. That's not going to work. They'll say, what you did, you'll have to face the reactions. If we can keep our death in mind, we will change our life. In other words, how do you wish to be remembered after death? What do you wish to achieve at that stage? You decide and then re reverse engineer your life from there. Like the Indian chemical engineers, 
the reverse engineer. You know, America is very worried. The pharmaceutical companies, they do years of research, they get a new drug, and within 15 days, the Indian engineers, they've reverse engineered it, and they are producing it beyond the trademark. So reverse engineer our life from the point of death, and you will decide how you wish to live. So this death is an irrevocable reality of life. May as well accept it. Sri Krishna says, Arjun, you accept it for yourself and for all these people and therefore do not lament if they are going to die in this war. Now beyond that, today's topic was all centered around the soul and the body and death and life. Now we will move on into the other topic. Sri Krishna is going to talk about duty. He is going to talk about karma, about karma yoga, the destination from all of these. Then he is going to talk about the mind, detachment, the diseases of the mind. All these will come as we go beyond in this chapter.